leadership of Deliverance Church in Tebe, you are most welcome to this service. We hope that you get blessed. Let's humble ourselves for a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your presence in our space, in our bedrooms, in our sitting rooms, in our cars, wherever people are watching from. We thank you, Lord. We pray that you will reach out and through this broadcast you will touch your people at their very need. We thank you for those that are down. May you uplift them. For those that are weak, may you give them strength. For those that are lacking, may you be their provider. And may your presence be felt. We thank you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to Hope for Today. Friends, our hope for today is the Spirit of God interceding through us, declaring the purposes of God in our time, even when we are not aware of it. The Bible says, I have heard their cry. God hears our cry. We are not settlers in this world. Jesus said we are in this world, but not of this world. You need to use the very tool that God has put in your hands. Whatever assignment he has given you, whatever task he has given you, he has also given you a tool. Our God is mighty. The Bible says he's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. The Bible says what he decides to do, he can do mightily. Every Sunday at 6 p.m. only on Google TV. Hope for Today is a broadcast of Deliverance Church, Uganda. We invite you to praise and worship with us. Please welcome our praise and worship team. Yeah. 
Jesus reigns. He's still in the business of reigning. Hallelujah. Our God is authentic. Our God never changes. Amen. Authentic God. Oh, na na na. Authentic God.
our God reigns, hallelujah. Amen. Our God reigns, hallelujah. Even amidst the pandemic, God still reigns, hallelujah. Amen. Nothing has changed about God. He's still a sovereign God. He's still the all-powerful, the almighty. He reigns in our midst, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with we some power and love. Our God is an awesome God, our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with we some power.
fuga Yesu fuga Kawa kawa sayuni Mbolo goma ya yuda Fuga Yesu fuga Jesus, we magnify and glorify your name, O oh God. We thank you, Jesus, that you reign, O oh God. Even amidst this pandemic, Lord, you reign. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God, our Lord and Savior. Yes, indeed, is Lord. Even at this time when COVID-19 is very devastating, we still acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus Christ, even over COVID-19. I have a message to share with us, and it is entitled, the healing of the land and nation for that matter. The healing of the land. When we talk about healing, what are we meaning exactly? It is to do with the state of being whole. The state of being healthy. Restoration to health. In some sense, it may also mean purification or cleansing. And so we are saying our nation needs healing. Our nation, Uganda, needs healing. Right now, bearing in mind what is happening, we are all looking to God. We are like Jehoshaphat in the book of Second Chronicles 20. He was surrounded by enemies, all sides. And they said, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And I want to encourage us that our eyes should be fixed on the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who conquered death, the one who said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And in his name, I stand here before you. Healing of the land. What does God say about this? We are going to be reading from two sets of texts. One from the book of Ezekiel 22, 17 to 31. And the other text will be from the book of Second Chronicles. 7, 13 to 14. The healing of the the healing of the nation. I want us to look at the text from the Old Testament. They're all from the Old Testament. Ezekiel 22. Ezekiel 22 from verse 17. Ezekiel 22. The book of Ezekiel prophecy of Ezekiel 22 from verse 17. The word of the Lord came to me. Whenever the Bible says the word of the Lord came, came to the prophet, it means clearly that we are dealing with God's word. This is the word of God. The Lord, then the word of the Lord came to me. Verse 18. Son of man, the house of Israel has become dross to me. All of them are the copper, are copper, tin, iron, lead, left inside a furnace. They are but the dross of silver. Therefore, this is what I 
I, the sovereign Lord, say it. Because you have all become dross, I will gather you into Jerusalem as men gathered silver, copper, and iron, lead, and tin into a furnace to melt, to melt it with a fairy blast so that I gather you in my anger and my wrath and put you inside the city and melt you. I will jump to verse number 23, the same chapter, verse number 23, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, and the verse is 23. Again, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, say to the land, you are a land that has had no rain or showers in the day of wrath. There is conspiracy of her princess within her, like a roaring lion tearing its prey. They devour people, take treasures and precious things, and make many widows within her. Verse 26, her priests do violence to my law and profane my holy things. They do not distinguish between the holy and the common. They teach that there is no difference between the unclean and the clean. And they shut their eyes to the keeping of my Sabbath so that I am profaned, profaned among them. Verse 27, Ezekiel 22. Her officials within her are like wolves, tearing their prey. They shed blood and kill people to make unjust gain. Verse 28. Her prophets whitewash these deeds for them, for them by false visions and lying divinations. They say, this is what the sovereign Lord says when the Lord has not spoken. Verse 29, the people of the land, uh, the land practice extortion and commit robbery. They oppress the, the poor and the needy and mistreat the alien, denying them justice. Verse 30, I looked for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it, but I found none. So I will pour out my wrath on them and consume them with my fiery anger bringing down on their own heads all they have done, declares the Sovereign Lord. Whenever we read in the Bible that conclusive sentence, declares the Sovereign Lord, the Lord is putting his seal on what he has said. He's saying, this is what I have said, and it is absolutely true. Brethren, I want us to look at this text in two phases. The first phase is where we are seeing people have sinned. People have sinned against God and they have done all kinds of sins against God. And because of that, God has brought verdict, judgment upon them. The second phase will be, we shall be looking at a scenario whereby God in his sovereignty has decided to test his people by allowing certain things to happen, calamities, disasters, suffering, pain, and is testing the faith of his people. In either case, we as God's people, we as his creation, we have a part to do. And God has promised that when we do our part, he being a merciful God, he will hear us. He will, see our, he will see our tears and he will hear our cry and he will forgive us and he will heal our land. What a wonderful thing. One thing we know, brethren, we must never, never, never lose hope. We must not lose hope. We must turn in the hope that this God 
who has allowed certain things to happen is the same God who also will provide an answer for us if we follow his terms and conditions. As we have just read from the, uh, the book of Ezekiel 22 from 17 to 31, and we see how the condition of the people was, was terribly bad. People were in a very low spiritual condition, pathetic abomination. Spiritual condition was bad. Israel was at its lowest level. And that can be also applied to our land today. Uganda is no exception. We know that whatever sin they did, we are also doing here, right here. They rebelled against God, we are doing that. They practiced witchcraft and sorcery, we do that, don't we? They committed all kinds of abominations, and we know we do that. There are four groups of people mentioned in this text which we need to look at and indeed need to consider and compare to our condition today. The four groups of people are, the prophets are mentioned. These prophets actually are meaning they are princes. That translation says princes. They are mentioned in verse 25. In verse 26, the priests are mentioned. Another group of people. But let's begin with the prophets. We know that these are the people, if we look at them as princes or royals or kings, these are the people who are supposed to rule on behalf of God. They are there to rule on behalf of God. Rule the people of God for the glory of God. And these people, these also sinned against God. What does the Bible say about them in verse 25? Verse 25, the book of Ezekiel 22, verse 25, we read, we read, there is conspiracy, conspiracy of her princes, with her like a roaring lion, tearing prey, they devour people. They are devouring souls. They take treasures. They take precious things. And they make many, many widows. That means they are murdering men. So that these widows, these women are left without husbands. And they become widows. When you look into our land, there are many widows. There are many, many widows. Uh, from Right from the first government after independence, we know that there are many, many widows in this land. God is concerned about widows. There are four classes of people that God is concerned about in the Bible. The widows. Yes, the orphans. Yes, the aliens, foreigners. Yes, and the poor. God is concerned about them. He wants them to be treated well and treated really with dignity and with real concern and passion for them. He said, you, the prophets, you, the princes, you, the, the royals, you have sinned against the Lord. You are supposed to have protected the people, taken care of them, and given them what they need. But instead of that, you have devoured them and left them completely hopeless. The prophets, or the princes in that case. Secondly, the priests. The priests, normally they were supposed to be the people that stand before, stand be between, between man and God to stand between man and God, to stand as, an, as intercessors, to bring sacrifice to God on behalf of the people, to bring their own sacrifice, and then the sacrifice for the people. But you see how they have fallen short of their uh, expectation. The priest, verse 26, do not, they do violence to my law. They profane my holy things. They don't even know the difference between holy and unholy. What a terrible thing. When you take that into account and look at the people we are in Uganda, those who are supposed to stand between God and the people, the priest, the clergy, the people of God, the ordained people, even unordained, but proclaiming the word of God. What is our condition? Could we be even worse than the condition of the priests at the time of the prophet Ezekiel? Look at what is happening in the church. So many things in the media, in the newspapers where the pastors, the reverends have brought, they have profaned the name of the Lord by doing sins and walking in the way 
which is abominable to God. Next mentioned here in this text, we are seeing also the leaders, the princes. That is in verse now 27. This actually refers to the leaders or stewards, people who are entrusted, God entrusted the people, the souls of people of the land to them so that they may be good stewards and be good examples to them and lead them in righteousness. Lead them according to the will of God, according to the commandments of the Lord as they knew from the covenant. But also they have failed. If you look at verse 27 there, it talks about how officials, these are the people who are leaders in the land, our officials are doing terrible things. They are like wolves. They are tearing the prey. They are tearing people. They are shedding blood, innocent blood. Brethren, all this we are innocent of. We are actually not innocent at all. We are not. We have committed all these sins in this land. And God is saying, who am I going to trust with my people? Then now the prophets, who are mentioned in verse number 29. Verse number 29 talks about, um, uh, before verse 29, mentioned the prophet. The prophets are prophesying their own vision, their own heart. What the Lord has said, they left away completely. Uh, they, they didn't bring it to the people, but they brought to the people their own visions, which are sinful, which are selfish. You will agree with me, brethren, that uh, the prophets we are hearing about in our land today, they prophesy what people want to hear. They want to hear that they, they are prosperous. They are going to prosper. They are going to get visas. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a sense, we can say thank you. <laughs> the, the COVID has cut down these things of vi visas. But of course, in those days, people will be praying and prophesying visas, prosperity, nothing. The prophets in the Old Testament were concerned about the purity of life among the people of God, among the covenant people of God. Are they living according to the covenant that God has given them? They were concerned about the holiness of people. They were concerned about the people who were breaking God's covenant. And they would warn with very severe tones. And they would warn them and say, come back to God. Come back to God. And then verse number 29 talks about the ordinary people, the people of the, the commoners. Now, we may call them the commoners. Now, brethren, if the people of God in any given land, if the people were supposed to know God and reveal God to the people, if they are sinning, they are living in sins, how much more will the common people violate the word of God? And so it's no wonder that even the ordinary people now we are reading about, they are sinful. They are in sins. Verse 29, they are talking about the people of the land practice extortion. They commit robbery. They oppress the poor and the needy. And they mistreat the aliens. They deny them justice. That is happening. People need models to follow. Leaders, pastors, Apostles, whoever you call, whatever you call yourself, people need to see models to follow. They need to see examples that they can that, that, that they can emulate, so that they have something to to follow. Paul, in his letter to, to, to Titus, he says, after telling Titus what to do, do this to the young people. Make sure that they are behaving this way. To the young people, the young uh, uh, people, the, the old ones, the old women, the old men. And somewhere in the middle there, Paul says, but you, Titus, you as a leader, you have to be an example to them so that they can emulate you. We have leaders in Uganda, political leaders, church leaders, religious leaders. Are you an example that the people can emulate? When they look at what you are saying, what you are doing, and how, how you are living, can they say, yes, I want to follow that man? Or can they say, no? If that man claims to be who he is, then I would rather stay where I am. Brethren, we have a duty to be mentors. Mentors who can be emulated. People who can be actually followed. 
God said in that word, in, in, in that very context, he said, I looked for just one man who could stand in the gap to build the fallen wall and to stand in the gap for, on behalf of the people. In other words, to intercede. God is looking for just one man in Uganda here, in your village, in your Gombrola, in your county, in your district. God is just looking for that one person. It could be a man, could be a woman. Some want to stand in the gap and plead on behalf of the souls of the people. Will you be that one person? Will you be that one person who cried day and night before the Almighty God so that God may have mercy upon us? God may have mercy upon Uganda. God may have mercy upon people living in here, even foreigners who are here, because we do have people from other countries too. Another phase I want us to look at is in 2 Chronicles 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. We are familiar with this text. Every now and then we keep quoting. This is given in the context of the dedication of the temple. King Solomon has done the big task. The big task of building the temple. Not only had he finished building the temple, but also the palace and other houses that he desired to build. And now... The dedication has taken place and God is talking now. And God says in verse 13, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, when I command locusts to devour the land or send plague among my people, verse 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, one, two, pray, Three, seek my face. Four, turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. This scenario is such that God is actually testing the faith of his people. God is saying there will come a time that I will close the heavens expect it, it will come. And that time, when, it, when, when that time comes, I will close up the heavens. There will be no rain. No rain. That means drought. And drought means hunger. No rain. There will come a time I will command the locusts to devour the land. There will come a time I will send plague among my people. We are now seeing it happening in Uganda here. We have had the case of locusts coming up from Kenya. Praise the Lord. The Lord did not command them to eat anything. So they did not eat. We thank God for that. Locusts have come. Plagues have come. All kinds of plagues we are seeing today. And especially COVID-19. And God is saying, when that time comes, when that time comes, I would like you to do your part. I want you to humble yourself. Brethren, how do we humble ourselves? We humble ourselves by afflicting our soul through fasting. Through fasting. Through fasting. I think Ugandans, we are very familiar with the feasting and not very familiar with the fasting. God is calling us to resort to fasting. Seriously. Afflicting our souls. Humble ourselves. Pray, seek God, and turn away from our wicked ways. You say, but I'm not wicked. I'm saved. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I speak in tongues. I pray. I see miracles. My dear brother, my sister, you're wicked. If you just want to know, be honest and ask the Holy Spirit to show you yourself. Just ask the Holy Spirit to show you yourself. There's a prayer in the book of Psalms 139, verse 23 and 24, it says, Go, Lord, search me and know my heart. I wish every one of us can pray that prayer honestly. Search me and know my heart. Sometimes I don't even know what is in my heart. There is what we can call self-deception. And that's the most dangerous type of deception. If I'm deceived by somebody, I, I will find out. But if I'm deceived by myself, it is very hard to find out. 
And so the Bible says, if we say we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. The truth is, we have sinned. The truth is, we need to humble ourselves. The truth is, we need to pray. The truth is, we need to seek God. The truth is, we need to turn away from our wicked ways. And God has promised to do three things when we do that. He has promised to hear from heaven. He who created ears, surely has ears to hear. He has promised to forgive us. And he has promised to heal our land. Literally, God is saying, yes, there's a disaster in the land. There is this plague here. But God is saying, literally, I have given you, my people, who are known by my name, I've given you the key. Key number one, let's humble ourselves. Key number two, let us pray. Key number three, let us seek the face of the Lord, our God. Key number four, let us turn away from our wicked ways and we shall see our land healed for the glory and for the honor of our God. But of course, healing must begin from personal experience. It's no good talking about healing of our land, healing of our people, when you are not in the right stand with your God. Jesus came into the world so that we may receive healing, not only physically, but also spiritually. He who believes in the Son has life. He who does not believe in the Son has not life. And the wrath of God, the anger of God, the condemnation of God rests upon him. I am appealing to you in the name of Jesus. Return to God. Let us return to God. Let us reconcile, be reconciled to God. And this is the opportunity. This is the time to seek him with all our heart, to repent and turn away from our wicked ways and to ask him to heal us, to heal us individually, to heal our families, to heal our clans. Yes, clans need healing, to, lead, to heal our tribes and to heal our nation. I'll sing a song that we are familiar with. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. This song is taken from the book of Lamentation of Jeremiah. He's known as a weeping prophet. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy shall never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy shall never come to an end. They are new every morning. New every morning, great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, whom you sent into the world to carry our sins upon himself on the cross at Calvary. In that name I pray and commit every one of us who is hearing this message and who has heard this message, that dear Lord, you are willing to, to heal us. You are willing to heal us individually. You are willing to heal us as families, as clans, as tribes, as a nation. But Lord, may you enable us to do our part. Enable us to do our part, O oh God. And I'm appealing to you now, personally, those who are hearing me, be healed by repenting and turning to God. Turn away from that idolatry. Turn away from that idol worship and repent and turn to the living God and worship Him. Yes, 
by the help of the Holy Spirit, this is possible. Lord, I pray at this time when we are all scared about the death that is happening amidst us. Lord, we remember what you have said in your word, that you will seal your own. Put a seal upon them. Lord, seal us. Seal us with the blood of the Lamb of God. So that when the angel of death comes, he will pass over us. Hallelujah. Lord, seal us also as your own children. By placing the Holy Spirit in us, the Bible says in Ephesians 1.13, we have become sealed, sealed in that Holy Spirit. Showing that we, are be, we belong to, to the Father. We belong to you. And as we belong to you, Lord, you will take care of us, even at this time of COVID-19. We ask you, Lord Jesus Christ, you are Lord over COVID-19. Have mercy upon us and heal our land and remove this plague. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you for staying till the end. We hope you had a good time. We hope the Lord blessed you. Um, for giving, please um, reach out to us on our numbers that are running on the screen right now. Um, I, our mobile money number and the bank account number. Feel free to come and uh, interact with us. Please remember to observe SOPs. Um, also remember to follow us on our social media platforms for testimonies and prayer requests. Reach out to us through our podcast.